Hey, Canucks fans, the Canucks are going to be playing a lot of games at home for the holidays, so it's time to make some hay in the standings. I'm Clay Emo, I'm at Connect Clay on Twitter, I'm at Clayton Emo on Instagram, I'm the founder of the GLCPC, the Good Looking Canucks Positivity Club, and this is my Canucks take, all in one take. It's Clay's Canucks commentary for Monday, December the 2nd. Canucks are off today before they host the Ottawa Senators tomorrow night, and it's Alex Burrell's night, Alex Burrell's going up into the Ring of Honor. I'll talk, th- uh, talk more about that tomorrow including some Alex Burrell's memories but for today let's quickly recap uh, last night's game and talk about a few things a few issues surrounding the team right now so as I said in my uh, recap last night I didn't mind Oscar Fannenberg's game limited minutes but 13 minutes a solid uh, safe play and I did like the way that the Canucks scored Besser with that dirty goal uh, from a standpoint of uh, taking a stick to the face causing a cut, uh, the first Canucks goal, and Josh Levo going to the net for the second goal. But uh, it wasn't enough as Edmonton beat them 3-2. to two. Edmonton's power play went 2-2. Two for two. Obviously, the Canucks penalty kill went 0-2. for two. And um, it was a tough. Uh, uh, Louis Erickson, I, I admit, I was a little harsh on him in the... In the um, in my post game vlog yesterday, because I only saw the the highlights of his penalties um, once, I didn't take a quick look at them, and now I see that in both of them, Nurse was uh, doing a very good acting job, and maybe that Erickson was penalized unfairly. Still, you got to kill those off, and the Canucks weren't able to do so, and and hence they lost three to two. I'm not too beat up. Not too upset over the 3-2 loss. That is the best team in the Pacific Division. And we can't expect to beat them every time we play them, even though we did uh, beat them quite handily on Saturday night. Um, it wasn't meant to be on Sunday night. So that's what you'd expect, right? If you expect between two good teams is we're going to win some, they're going to win some. So when you look at it as a whole to get a split, that makes about sense. You don't want to get swept. It'd be nice to do the sweeping, but uh, winning one, losing one, that's okay. Just, I guess, ironic that it happened uh, on each other's home ice. The other thing you got to remember, the Canucks are coming off a six-game road trip. As John Garrett said on the broadcast, it's almost like a seven-game road trip. To come back, to fly home that morning from the six-game road trip that took you throughout the eastern United States and then had to play that night, it in essence becomes a seven-game road trip because if the guys got home at all, it was just to drop off their laundry or, or to say hi to their, their, their families. And that was it, then back at the arena for the game. So, in essence, a seven-game road trip, but take, a, take away last night's game. The Canucks did go three on three and three. They got six out of a possible twelve points, and that wasn't bad. Now the huge thing is, including last night's game in December, ten of the thirteen games are at home. And that's kind of what I entered. You know, I led this video off with ten out of thirteen are at home. So obviously, it's a, re- a good chance for the Canucks to make up some good ground in the standings. And as I've been talking about for the past week and a half, a lot of these games are going to be against. Pacific Division opponents, not only Edmonton last night, but more. Uh, there's a huge bunch of them, a huge clump of them. Vegas and LA and and Calgary at the end and at the end of this month. So there's going to be a lot. I think it's Calgary. I know Vegas and, and LA for sure. There's going to be a lot of games against Pacific Division opponents uh, this month. And the, uh, so for both reasons, the fact that they're Pacific Division rivals, same division, and the fact that the Canucks are at home, the for so many of these games. These games are very, very important. And the Canucks' home record hasn't been great so far. In 11 games, they only have five wins. They're 5-3-3. Three, and three. So depending on your uh, definition of 500, by NHL terms, by point percentage, they are over 500 because they have 13 points in those 11 games, right? 5-3-3. Three, and three. However, my definition of 500, I think the old school definition, I just look at wins and losses, and the Canucks have lost more than they've won at home. They've uh, lost six games, and they've lost five. So the Canucks need to fix that pretty quick and it's going to be very important for them to do so. So huge, like I said, 10 of the 13 games in December are at home. One other thing I was going to talk about is the, the penalty kill. I hinted at it yesterday. I didn't get a chance to get in my vlog, but I did it in a tweet afterwards. I'm not going to beat the Canucks up uh, for their poor penalty kill performance yesterday. It, take away the fact that the, maybe the penalty shouldn't have even been called, but uh, you're playing against the two best players in the league right now. McDavid and Dreisaitl, and they showed why they were so good. You know, Dreisaitl gained those two power play goals. And you got to remember, the Canucks are without probably their four top uh, penalty killers. Well, definitely their top penalty killing D-man, Edler. Edler always plays with Tanev, and um, Edler was out, so there goes those minutes. And uh, by the way, Tanev and Ben were on the ice for all three Oilers goals last night. Not blaming them. Their first goal was at even strength, and uh, but the last two goals were on the power play. So you certainly can't fault them for the second and third goals on the power play. You know, you can quibble a bit with their coverage, but especially Jamie Benz, excuse me, Jordy Benz on the on on uh, the third goal and definitely on the first goal. He the even strength goal. He had a chance to get the puck out of the out of the um, out, out of the end. Actually, I think that was the, the the second goal. Anyways, on one of the two goals, I know Jordy Benz had a chance to get rid of the puck. Uh, so he was on the ice for all three. But like I said, with Tanev, 
but the first one was the only one to even strength the other two on the penalty kill. So but let's get back to the penalty kill. The Canucks were missing Alex Edler, the number one D-man, and they were missing arguably their top three forwards when it came to the penalty kill, when it comes to penalty kill. And that is their two centers in Jay Beagle and Brandon Sutter, and then Tyler Mott also plays a lot on the penalty kill. You know, we saw pairings that had Beagle and Schaller and then Sutter and Mott. And then you could say Anton Roussel would be in there as well if he was uh, healthy and playing, which is which is going to be soon. So, um, you know, that's a huge, huge factor. You're playing against the, the best penalty kill in the league, and you're missing four of your best penalty killers. It makes sense that the Canucks went two for two, uh, giving up two for two, whereas on Saturday it was great. They killed off all three of Edmonton's chances. So just some thoughts for you there. Um, the penalty kill, let's not slag them too much because, uh, yeah, because they're missing such good players and look who they're playing against. But I think more importantly, I wanted to point out today that the Canucks have to make some hay, uh, do some damage in the standings this month, given that they have 10 of 13 games at home, a lot against Pacific Division opponents, so another reason why to, to play well. But more importantly, they got to rectify their home record. Like I said, they've only have uh, five wins of those 11 games. So Canucks fans, a few things for you to talk about there. Think about there. Talk about home versus away. Why do you think the Canucks have struggled at home? Talk about the miss, uh, missing, you know, our, our penalty kill and playing against McDavid and, and Dreisaitl without Sutter, Beagle, Mott, and Edler. Tell me your impressions of last night's game. What do you think of Fantenberg? What do you think of Markstrom's play? And what were the other reasons aside from playing against a really good team? And do you agree with me that we were, uh, you know, it was, uh, I don't know, complain about the schedule, but it was, uh, you know, it's a tough go to, to play at home, like I said, almost in essentially a, a seven game road trip. So leave your thoughts below. I love to read, react, reply as always, and let you know what you're thinking. Tomorrow, I'll be going to tomorrow night's game. Got upgraded to a suite, which is nice, which is pretty sweet uh, for tomorrow night. Me and my season ticket partner, Mike, will be in the suite, and therefore my son, Sean, and his girlfriend, Fernanda, will get to use. Uh, it's a pretty sweet deal for them. They get to use our regular seats for Alex Burrell's night. So I'll talk about Alex Burrell's a bit more tomorrow. But in, in the meantime, if you want to leave a comment down below about Burrell's as well, be happy to read those also. All right, leave a comment. Love to read, react, and reply. Subscribe if you'd like to. Like this video if you'd like to. Enjoy your day. God bless. Go Canesco.